before literally it started in grade 10 when I was about 15 years old um, and uh, it was just a matter of having the wherewithal of actually figuring out how to just start shooting that 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 was actually the, the big thing was just deciding uh, what to, uh, what to shoot and eventually trying to figure out how to put together all the things that I had shot because like these are like historical moments in terms of family history that I thought were were big like my grandmother turning 80 and at that point she hadn't even agreed to really tell the story yet but I had conspired with my cousins to have these photo boards up at her 80th birthday because I thought you know if we're gonna start the film the best way to start is just showing my grandmother acknowledging her past and forcing her to basically acknowledge her past with the family all gathered around her looking at the family photos and saying you know why don't you tell us about that so she couldn't just retreat into Shikata Gadai and say Oh, you know, that was a bad time, but the sky is blue and life is wonderful, which is sort of the, the Shikatakanai in response to everything. <laughs> so you're in 10th grade and you're studying Japanese-Canadian history and frustrated by that. So you decide that you want to document it and, and, and tell a different kind of more personal story from a woman's yeah. perspective. Uh, and so you decide to tell the story of her grandmother, but you don't tell your grandmother that that's what you want to do. Was she reluctant to, to be the star of a, a feature documentary? Uh, yes, well we hoodwinked her into talking about her past with the photo albums, and then I hoodwinked her into traveling with me across the country on, under the guise of us taking a vacation. <laughs> but the condition was, she had always said to me, you know, it'd be really nice to travel, because she had traveled with some of my other cousins, and uh, my father was ill, um, he, he, a lot of people say, were your, fam were your parents divorced? Because he sort of appears and then disappears, but unfortunately he passed away when I was fairly young. He was ill for a very long time, so my grandmother did a lot of traveling with uh, a lot of other members of my family, but not me. Um, and uh, sort of, I guess, like Freudian analysts would probably say that that was probably one of the things that fueled me to go crazy and get this project done. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so we had a really close relationship, but we never traveled. She always said, oh, let's travel. I said, oh, okay, fine. You want to travel? I'll take you across the country. We, we found her house, uh, which was a total shock, um, because I think that happened shortly after we'd already shot the photo board sequence. My uh, cousin was uh, an early web developer, and he was developing an inter interface. It's so common now, but back in like 2000, it was like the most advanced thing ever. It was, it was text recognition for images. And of course, what do you do when you develop you know, a beta prototype of software? You type your own name in to see what it recognizes. So he types in Okura, and up pops the Okura house. Mr. Okura was a millwright, and he reads the story as we're starting to research the film. He says, I think I just found the house. I said, what are you talking about? That house was torn down you know, back in 1941 or 42. And, and then he sends me the link, and uh, I was I, I was working in a radio studio at the time, and I yelled so loudly, I think it actually went on air on the other side of the glass. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then and then I said, look, we found your house, I can rent it, it's part of this uh, sort of a lodge, um, would you like to come? And she said, yes. I said, okay, great, no problem. We're going to go with my friend Bill, who's got a camera, and he's going to be shooting all of our conversations, do you mind? <laughs> and uh, and that's... She still doesn't know that she's the... I, I think she probably figured it out by, by then, but, uh, and I said, you know, anytime you can, you can stop, if you feel uncomfortable, just let me know, and we'll, you know, we'll stop talking about it, and it, it happened a couple of times, actually, and, and the, uh, going through the diary where she got a little bit emotional, that's, that's one of the few times where she actually had to stop because she was emotional, um, and that, that happened a few times, but what always ended up happening was she said, I have to stop, I have to stop. Half an hour later, she said, oh, but then I just thought of this other thing. Okay, let's continue. And, that, and it was like sort of a stop-start process. Uh, and it was a diff... And we did uh, the interviews with her sitting down at the House of Telegraph Cove. We booked about three hours a day over four days. Uh, so we did 12 hours of interviews, three hours a day, with me asking the same questions. And each time, uh, she was very linear in the, in the way that she thought. Um, it would be slightly more, uh, there would be more detail in the stories and, and like more texture and color and, you know, side stories and, and the way we would get from A to B was different, so. So your grandmother was 80, as we saw back in 2001. Is she still alive? Uh, unfortunately, no. She passed away uh, about a year and a half ago, but... <laughs> your film premiered when? Well, 2012, and she passed away in 2013. Um, and, and the crazy thing about this project, I, I mean, not only is it risky, she, she the reason, sorry, I'm, I, there's a million different ways to approach this. 
the reason that I had to subtitle some of the things that she said was uh, that she had had several strokes, uh, and that that was why it was significant that she was even turning 80, and that's why you know, she sort of stood back and said, you know, I realize now that I, I've gotten back my ability to move because she was paralyzed, half her body was paralyzed, and uh, and half, obviously, of her mouth was paralyzed as well, so it affected her speech. Um, so when she got tired, that the effects of the stroke sort of came back, so she would slur quite a bit, and 